Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's uh, Adobe Illustrator tutorial, we're gonna be creating some kind of fun futuristic lines that you can use for, you know, maybe the background of a poster design, uh, use it on packaging or as a web graphic, something of the sort. Uh, really, you know, you could use this anywhere. So here's kind of an example of what we'll be creating here. A fun futuristic texture that is super easy to play with and get different looks with. So yeah, let's jump into it. First, let's create a new file just so you know we're starting from the beginning. Uh, we'll do 1000 by 1500, which is like a nice poster aspect ratio, two by three. Then what we'll do is create a line with the pen tool by either hitting P or coming over here to the pen tool. I always try to use my hotkeys. So we wanna create a line maybe about this size here. We will get rid of the fill by hitting the slash key or you can hit down here and do the none. Then on this line here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is create a radial gradient. So we'll click our gradient tool right here. And then on our gradient panel, uh, which I already have up, but you can pull up if you'd like to just by searching uh, gradient here, or you can come down to window and click gradient, or I guess I have mine set up for command F9 as well. Um, but once you have your gradient panel pulled up, like I said, we're gonna to wanna to switch it to a radial gradient. Uh, from here, what we're gonna to wanna to do is adjust some of these colors. So on this side, we'll start with kind of like an orangish color. If you wanna change your color mode here, super easy, you can just come up and hit these dots. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is lower some of the blues to get closer to an orange color. Uh, somewhere around this orangish red, put a little back on the blues, a little more yellow, greenish. Okay, that looks good, something around there. Feel free to copy this hex code or the values that you see here. The next bubble that we're gonna create here is just a pure white. So to add another point on this, we will just click and again, double click on the circle uh, and then click this white over here, which is 255 for everything. Next, we're gonna create another, another dot on this radial gradient, make this a darker blue. So let's bring the blues way up. Probably want a little bit of green in there uh, and then pull the reds down. Okay, doesn't have to be exact. Let's try something like that. Again, feel free to copy the hex code. Uh, finally, what we're gonna do is change this black to a light blue. So let's max out this blue and pull up the greens a bit. Get maybe like a, a pretty cyan color here. Feel free to move the spacing around in these a little bit. Pretty much you just want them relatively even. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty good there. So I actually just realized that uh, I accidentally put the gradient on the fill rather than the stroke, but uh, this is a good learning opportunity. What we can do is hit shift X, which will switch the fill and the stroke. And now you can see that we have this colored line here. Uh, I can increase the point size a little bit so you can see that better. That way we have a stroke rather than a fill, which is what we want. So from here, we can get rid of that fill by hitting the slash key or hitting this little icon down here. And we're gonna bring this stroke back down to a one point stroke, uh, which we may end up adjusting a bit later. From there, what we can do is duplicate this line by clicking uh, the line and doing command C, command V, uh, or a little bit of an easier way in my opinion is to hit the option or alt key and drag it with shift so it goes straight to the right of it. Once we have these two lines drawn, what we can do is select both of them. We'll do object blend make, uh, and we're gonna wanna do a little bit of adjustment here. So we'll come back up to object, blend, blend options. Uh, and we wanna switch from smooth color to specified steps. For specified steps, we're gonna wanna cut this down to something maybe like, maybe we'll try 60 and you know, you just want to get a density somewhat similar to this. Um, depends on how far apart your lines are uh, and how big your document is, but we'll, we'll try 60 here for now. Uh, we can always come back and change this as well. So once we have that blended, we can move it off to the side. And uh, what we're gonna wanna do next here is draw kind of a twisty blob. So we'll go over to our paintbrush tool and uh, draw ourselves a little twisty shape. So something like this, doesn't have to be exact. Like this helix look though, it's gonna give us a kind of a cool result. Then we'll take this endpoint here and just kind of drag it so it lines up with the direct select tool. Zoom in a bit. Uh, why don't we adjust this anchor point a bit as well so it has a nice clean transition, um, relatively clean. And then what we're gonna wanna do is select the shape that we just created with the brush tool and hit shift 
X, which will take us from stroke to fill. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is drag these lines over and make sure that they cover up the full shape here. So you can just drag your transform tool around and make sure it covers up the full shape of the line. Then what you're gonna wanna do from here is select both the line blend as well as your new brush shape. And then go up here again to object, envelope distort, make with top object. And we'll get this kind of cool, funky looking uh, shape here. You know, you can stretch this around with the, the transform tools, make different shapes, um, get different looks. Why don't we throw this on a little bit of a background so we can see it better. Uh, what we can do is take this to maybe like a, a darkish blue, real dark tones here. Pull this over onto our background, make sure it's in front. And we have a cool little shape here that uh, is super easy and fun to make uh, for a poster design. So why don't we throw this into an actual design here. What we can do is uh, get this to a point that we like. Maybe we'll turn it sideways a little bit and expand it. We will go kind of this way, rotate like this, get it so it's kind of coming off the artboard a bit. And that looks like reasonable placement there. Uh, then why don't we get some text on this fake poster here. We can type maybe future for this. We'll switch this font to Haas Grotesque. Go with the black. We'll change this color here to maybe like a little bit of a warm toned white. Blow this up nice and big here. Maybe put in this upper left corner here. Next, what we'll do is draw a little text box here, something like that, and then uh, paste our lorem ipsum into here. We will change the color of this to something like a little bit of an off-white, warmer toned off-white. Uh, let's get a little, little bit larger on the size here. Why don't we try 24 point? And then let's add a header here as an example. Uh, why don't we bring this up to 32 point, staying on that four point grid, and we'll make this a black, a little hierarchy there. And then we can add a little space under this top row here, get a little more breathing room. And yeah, there's a super simple poster layout. We can do one more thing from here by adding a little bit of texture to this. So what we can do is, well first let's make it so we can just see what's actually in the artboard. So we'll go up to view, and then trim view, which will cut off the edges there for us. Uh, and then what we can do is draw a shape over the top of all of our stuff here. We'll change this color here to uh, mid-tone gray. So we'll do 80, 80, 80 as the hex code. Hit okay. Uh, and then from here what we can do uh, is come up to effect, artistic, film grain. Uh, that'll pull up our little Photoshop window here. Um, I'm happy with the settings the way that they are, but you know you might want to play with it, shrink the grain size a little bit, increase it, play with the highlight area or intensity. Um, but we'll just leave it for here for now. Hit OK. Once we have that texture applied, what we're going to want to do is change the blend mode of this. So we'll come over to Opacity, Blend Mode, and we'll switch this to an overlay, which will make the background actually visible. And yeah, uh, you can see a super basic poster layout, like I said here. Um, obviously, you probably want to play a bit more with this, uh, refine the texturing, uh, refine the typography. Uh, you know, probably you'd want to move this in a little bit, play with this. Um, definitely spend more time on this than I did. Yeah, quick look at you know making a fun little poster design with a, a fun effect. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, if you did, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like on the video. And if you're interested in more content like this, uh, feel free to stick around and check out some future videos. We do a lot of design history stuff here, as well as tutorials like this. Uh, basically trying to make this, you know, like a free version of design school. If that interests you, like I said, it'd be awesome if you'd stick around. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.